So from me, I would like to say one more time, then thank you for coming. Thank you for being here and greetings to everyone at home. And I would like to bring to this podium a very important person who is actually responsible for each and every one of us being here today, yesterday, and definitely tomorrow in action. The President, Mr. Herman Mashaba, sir. Thank you, Mr. Shobi, and uh, good morning to all of you, members of the media. I think before I share with you my speech or my remarks, let me tell you why I'm in a seat today. Uh, I woke up this morning after a shower, I said to my wife, and meet some very, very important future leaders of our country. Then I need to obviously to make sure that I share with them why I believe I succeeded in life in the 80s. Just to really give you a sense, I started my business career at the age of 22, uh, late in 1980. Majority of you were not even got it, never even thought about you as yet. <laughs> and uh, those days, uh, as black people, we had to carry uh, reference books to be able to move around. And they needed to really be uh, signed on a monthly basis by, white, by your white employer. But now, because I was not employed by anyone, I learned to duck and die from the police. I became a master in ducking and diving from the police. You know what saved me? Was always when I leave home, because I was not employed by anyone, always leave home with a suit and tie. It helped me to negotiate with the police. If I get cornered by the police, I'll always negotiate myself out because uh, they will realize that now this man is actually telling the truth. In the meantime, I was lying. I would tell them if I'm next to Gibbs, I'll say, no, I'm. I'm working for Gibbs uh, University or I'm working for Standard Bank, whichever company was around the corner. And Charles then says, I left my identity document at work. I'm going somewhere else. Uh, if you guys decide to arrest me, that's fine. Uh, Standard Bank or Gibbs will come and get me out. And obviously, if they do not want to get involved, um, I will, I will uh, survive. But second, and more important, was the respect I received uh, from my customers. Because when you appear like this, I'm sure most people will um, respect you. Unlike uh, I see the youth today, uh, they appear, first time you go and try and sell something as a trader, um, you dressed uh, shamefully really and so forth, and you expect to make a, a sale. Unfortunately, first impression is very important. So when you are dressed like I am right now, chances of people trusting you are very, very high. So that's why I became a brother, a father, an uncle, a son to many of my customers. And um, even after the abolishment of the past laws, um, I continued with a suit until uh, just a really few years ago. And I actually miss wearing a suit uh, from time to time. So I thought today, because I'm talking to the future leaders of our country, let me appear in a suit to show that I respect them. And I hope they can actually take a lesson from what I'm sharing with you because it has worked for me. I've been in business um, for many years. So I hope it does. So, once more, thank you very much for making the time. Uh, today, uh, fellow students and aspirant uh, ones, I address you on behalf of Action SA on a topic that is very dear to me, ensuring that South African youth 
I have the power through education to pursue life. The dream of growing up in the poor area of Karamutsi in Amanskaral, about 50 kilometers north of Pretoria, during the 1960s. It was my grandfather who showed me the importance and power of education as the route to self-reliance. He saw how life, tough, how tough life, that tough life was. It told me that God has given us enough brains as human species uh, to face and beat these uh, difficult times. Back then, my mom was the only one earning an income for our family. She worked as a domestic worker, living in the bedroom of a white family in Johannesburg. Why? I was raised with the help of my three sisters. It was my grandfather's advice, advice that compelled me to get out of poverty and appeal and pursue a higher education degree. I passed my matric in 1988. As I said earlier on, the majority of you, well, God had never even thought of you by then. Passing my matric in 1988 and enrolled for a B degree at the University of the North in 1989, which is today called the University of Limpopo. However, my studies were cut short when the apartheid government suddenly shut down the university during the national state of emergency during my second year of my studies in 1980. Still, I never stopped believing in the power of education. I always told my kids to look for chances to learn and study and now I help support scholarship programs for students across South Africa. And that's something that our family have been doing for almost 40 years now. I believe that access to quality education should not be a luxury accessible only to the few, but a tool available to the masses to improve the pathway out of the cycle of poverty and unemployment that entrap so many South Africans. Education is the key to upward mobility and overcoming the legacy of apartheid, where access to quality education was a function of the color of one's skin. Apartheid may, may have fallen, but the barriers to higher education have not. It is a great injustice that 30 years after the end of apartheid, millions of South Africans face insurmountable challenges to pay in post metric studies. Fellow South Africans, today, Action SA wants to table our plans to right this wrong. Today, Action SA wants to share our vision of expanding higher education opportunities to as many people as possible in our country, South Africa. Quality education has been a core value of Action SA from the beginning. We maintain that quality education is one of the best tools for people to empower themselves and improve not only their lives, but the lives of their families and their communities, and eventually their country. That is why we have committed that under HNSA government, no academically qualified student will be excluded from further education because they lack the funds to study. In the same way that we believe that schools and township communities should be on the same standards as those found in suburban areas, we believe that everyone in the country should have the opportunity to hire in case as long as they meet the academic requirements. Education and the possibility for upward mobility should not be a luxury; it should be a basic right. But the ruling party they failed to open the doors of learning by failing to dismantle the barriers to access for many South Africans. Our fellow South Africans, there is no doubt that many South Africans higher education centers are in a crisis. While too many students are prohibited from accessing tertiary education due to financial exclusion. Despite repeated promises and investigations into higher education funding, South Africa has made little progress in expanding access to higher education. Seven years after the release of the report of the Commission of Inquiry 
into the feasibility of making higher education and training free free in South Africa. Issues regarding funding for the so-called missing middle, missing middle of our student, unfortunately, still exist. These are students who do not qualify for funding under NEFSVAS, but also do not qualify for commercial lending alternatives. They are left without an option and without hope of a better future. It is simply unacceptable that 30 years after democracy, students are student from obtaining tertiary education because they lack the funds. Not while our government plays billions on propping up failing SOEs and allow limited funds to be stolen by self-interested uh, cadres. Many matriculants who have joined us today face an uncertain future, not sure if they would be able to attain tertiary education opportunities or skills to enter the workplace. Meanwhile, institutions NEFAS they have been clipped with corruption allegations as thousands of students go homeless or without food. Tertiary institutions across the country suffer from the maladministration and our own ministers face allegations of buying that degrees, thereby reducing the credibility of South African qualifications. And our centers of higher learning fail to address the critical skill shortage currently facing South Africa, from software developers, engineers, scientists, as an example. For us to fix South Africa and build a prosperous nation, we urgently need to address the funding crisis alongside reforms to our institutions of learning. Fellow South Africans, and particularly the youth of our country, today I want to commit to you that actually the SA government will significantly expand and improve access to a variety of post-metric opportunities, whether through traditional academic routes in universities or via colleges that are dedicated to technical skills and vocational training. Yesterday, student leaders from across South Africa gathered here in Johannesburg to further develop action essays plan to address the issue of financial exclusion from further education. Their deliberations were born of a resolution at our inaugural policy conference in September last year, where we resolved that Action SA would develop a proposal around student funding and accommodation. Today, I want to give you a glimpse of this plan that will detail our approach to expanding access to further education, not only for removing financial barriers, but through a comprehensive plan to address the institutional failures of the higher education system. This includes increasing financial support for academically qualifying students, including tuition, accommodation, and living expenses. Expanding our network of quality institutions of higher education to ensure to alleviate capacity constraints. Investing in new public sector student accommodation of opportunities to address the shortage we currently face. Increasing the opportunities for technical and vocational training by investing in new TVET colleges, reintroducing specialized training colleges such as teaching, policing, nursing, agriculture, artisan, artisan skills like plumbing and electrical work. And expanding their lifelong skills development programs to ensure our people always have, have um, uh, um, opportunities to gain additional skills throughout their careers. I've never believed in making promises I cannot keep. So I want to be honest that this will not happen overnight. Action is believes that government is a responsibility to be transparent about what it is and what it is not possible. I say this because while it is our dream that one day we can introduce free free education for all our students, we must accept that the reality we face as a country that suffers from low economic growth, a declining tax base, and sustained unemployment of over 40%. While we work towards growing our economy through our plan for economic prosperity, we will achieve our goal 
of ensuring that no academically qualified student will be excluded from further education through aggressive reprioritization of the national budget away from wasteful expenditures like SOE bailouts and VIP protection. I just had yesterday the city of Johannesburg, uh, the mayor has got 10 um, VIP protection with five cars. I mean, it's such a disgrace. Combined with reforms to NEFAS, alongside the introduction of our Opportunity Fund, we can remove barriers to funding access for all South Africans. This, my fellow South Africans, is entirely possible as long as we have the political, political will to make it happen, the political will to take action. Let me say this again. Under action as a government, no academically qualified student will be excluded from further education because they lack the funds to study. We will ensure that student funding will be a top priority ahead of any government expense. And with the establishment of Action SA's one of the kind opportunity fund, we will ensure that public funds that currently go to enriching entrepreneurs to embark in the young people of our country, South Africa. The Opportunity Fund will radically expand access to tertiary education by not only funding students, but also building new higher education facilities. When Action SA says quality education is one of our core values, we do not simply want to talk the talk, but through our players, we want to show that we put weight to action because only action will fix South Africa. Today, we want to demonstrate that we have spent countless hours deliberating on a credible approach that will address this crisis. We believe the proposal we are tabling today can once and for all ensure that doors of higher education are open to all. I would now like to hand over to our Team Fix South Africa member for education, Dr. Tutu Faneli, and some of our student representatives present this uh, morning to give you the approach that they've been deliberating yesterday and the last uh, few weeks and months from my side. Thank you very much and really appreciate uh, your you. Here, Mr. President, um, fellow students, colleagues, the president said something very important: the importance of stakeholders. In his case, it was his customers. For us, as Action SA, we have an amazing um, sponsor who is always so supportive of our initiatives. Um, to cast South Africa. We would like to thank you and send our appreciation. We hope that we can continue this relationship that we have uh, that is beneficial to the both of us. We don't just want to be the takers, but we also want to engage and assist you guys as well. So thank you for that. And up next, we have our shadow minister of education, um, Team Fix South Africa, Mr. Tutu Fileni, Dr. Ash, you need. <laughs> and thank you, Chairperson, Mr. President. Affection is a higher education policy initiatives are aimed at fixing our societal problems, such as inequality, unemployment, and the poorly performing economy, just to mention a few of these societal problems. Action SA is of the view that institutions of higher education, such as universities and TVET colleges, should continue to play a pivotal role in the development of skilled people who will contribute towards the economic empowerment of black, colored, Indian, and Asian South Africans, who, because 
of the legacy of apartheid continue to remain disadvantaged. In line with its policy of inclusive economic empowerment, Action SA will, after a period of years, conduct a review of the higher education curriculum such that offered at our institutions of learning continues to be relevant to the demands of economic growth of the country and of the world economy. A review of the higher education curriculum will entail continuous repositioning of artificial intelligence as an essential aspect of the historical mission of tertiary institutions, which is providing teaching research and community service. Action SA, when it takes over government, will improve the governance of our institutions of higher education. By the first and this was mentioned by the president of Action SA, by firstly doing away with political interference in the governance of expression universities, and also increase the capacity of university and tertiary institutions manage, managers to manage complex tertiary institutions within the broader context of worldwide technological advancement. Action SA is of the considered view that whilst it may be necessary to put universities under administration, this should be done with utmost caution and a university should not be placed under administration for a period in excess of 12 months. Actually, as they will revise the current legislation that empowers the minister to put universities under administration, such that such a move is done only when the governance at university, at university has collapsed and that the university management and council does not have a realistic strategic plan to improve or turn around the governance and management of the university. The revised legislation as anticipated by Action SA will require the minister to consult with a publicly appointed panel of experts before putting a university under administration and that an appointed administrator should on a three month basis continue to account to both the minister and an independently appointed panel of experts. As part of the improvement of preserving the autonomy of the universities, Action SA will take steps to ensure that politicians do not interfere with the day-to-day -day management of the operations of the universities and colleges, especially in the award of tenders uh, in the procurement of goods and services. Universities will constitute independent selected boards which will be made by the university community, relevant civil society entities. Such boards will provide oversight of the procurement processes at the universities. Action SA and its government will give special attention to criminality at universities and colleges. All ends of criminality, such as theft, corruption, and violence against students and staff will be investigated by a specialized crime unit and specialized courts will be established by Action SA to quickly dispense justice in such matters that affect university life and, and life at colleges. The admission for study, as mentioned by the president, the admission for study at universities by politicians and our all qualifications to politicians by universities should be made public. And the relevant legislative assembly should be informed on such processes. The rationale for this policy initiative is to eliminate the culture of politicians believing that by virtue of the positions they hold, then they are entitled to be awarded degrees by universities. In some cases, such politicians may not even have a metric qualification. Action SA will structure the implementation of the existing national student fund model such that all students 
who need financial assistance to access tertiary education are able to receive the necessary funding. Action SA in its quest to develop realistic policy initiatives in the funding of tertiary education recognizes that, that South Africa as a developing nation is not yet in position to provide free education to all students at tertiary institutions, given our socio-economic their realities. Action SA therefore proposes an education funding model which will provide for graduates uh, after graduation a three year period where they do not have any obligation to pay a debt which has accrued as a result of funding. And that after a period of 10 years, if necessary and possible, any debt that is accrued on the part of the student should be written off. Should be written off. Action SA also recognizes the present challenge of student accommodation, which has resulted in many of our students not able to live in healthy student accommodation, which is conducive to, to studying. Action, given the situation, Action SA will immediately take concrete steps aimed at resolving the accommodation crisis at our universities and colleges. These steps will be elaborated by one of our speakers, and they will, among other thing, things, entail a strong collaboration between the private sector and government. In line with its policy of exp expanding access to higher education, Action SA will build new teaching colleges, nursing colleges, and police colleges. You remember the old teachers' college. When I arrived at university to teach, I was told that half of the students, I think by then the, the role of students was 6,000, I was told that 3,000 of them are studying for teaching degrees. And I said, why don't we create colleges so that we relieve the pressure on, on the university to provide teacher training. So Action SA aimed at creating more teacher colleges, more colleges for nursing and for police and for agricultural scientists so as to create more economically active young people. Action SA will also expand the online delivery, online delivery of tertiary education in line with international best practice to ensure that South Africa make it possible for the majority of its people to access tertiary education. Under Action SA government, universities in South Africa and colleges will reclaim their glory and increase their standing in the international community of academia. Thank you, Chairperson. <laughs> Thank you very much, Doctor. Um, up next, we have a colleague of mine who is the National Youth Head of Voter Education and an SRC member, Go Northwest University. Ruben? Thank you, uh, Program Director, and good morning, uh, fellow, spe uh, fellow students and fellow South Africans. There's a Zulu saying that goes, which means, which means that you do not run away when your house is on fire. South Africans, it is clear that our figurative house of tertiary education, it's not just on fire, it has burned to the ground. As Action SA, we do not shy away from a challenge, and this morning, through practical and sustainable solutions, we will outline how we will, brick by brick, rebuild the state of South Africa's tertiary education system and expand access to funding so that no academically deserving student is financially excluded. In the first instance, it is important to understand that this policy will not deliver change overnight. At Action SA, we believe in being honest and not overpromising. But we believe that change can start immediately right now. To achieve universal access to higher education funding, an Action SA government will establish a framework um, that will ensure sustainable and inclusive funding for all South African students. This will serve as a foundation to, to ensure future economic growth 
and prosperity and employment and ensure that young people will have a platform and a path to upward mobility. This morning, I would like to focus on the issue of tuition fees and Action SA's approach to funding fellow students, while my colleagues are on the panel today will specifically focus on accommodation and living expenses and our proposals with regards to that, to ensure that students are not just supported in terms of their access to class and access to education, but to ensure that students uh, get realistic support at the end of the day. A well-rounded student should be able to focus on their academic futures rather than being subjected to inadequate and often inhumane housing conditions and accommodations with inflated prices or having to go to bed hungry to save the money to pay their rent, as is the state under the current ANC and NSFAS regime. As our president mentioned, Action SA aims to provide universal access to fee-free tertiary education to all students. But we have to be realistic about the current South African eco economic climate in which we find ourselves. In the short term, this will unfortunately not be possible and sustainable and feasible. However, through our economic prosperity, um, we will grow the economy and expand the tax base, providing for great resources that can be allocated to ensure that this could be a possibility in the future. And through our inclusive economic empowerment model, which includes the establishment of an opportunity fund, we will provide financial support to students who are currently excluded from funding opportunities. We will do this in the following ways. Firstly, through our opportunity fund, we will ensure fee-free education for all first-generation and second-generation students with a household income of below 500,000 rand per annum. This is an assembly state. This is a necessary step towards inclusive empowerment by breaking the cycle of poverty and unemployment in our communities that have generally been excluded from further education institutions. Education remains the best way out of poverty. The groundbreaking opportunity fund will supplement the current allocation afforded to higher education from the treasurer, which allows us to increase the level of support for our fellow students and for assisting uh, their funding at the end of the day. 10% of the funds of the Opportunity Fund will be directed to supplementing this budget already from the Treasury. Secondly, to expand access to those who come from households who earn above this threshold, we will use the Opportunity Fund to implement an aid scheme based on government-backed loans for all academically qualified students who cannot afford uh, to study. Following the completion of their studies, these loans will then be payable after two years uh, being in gainful employment, allowing these graduates to find their feet without the burden of debt. Debt repayment will be administered via SARS and repayments will be used to restore the Opportunity Fund to deal with the current administrative backlogs that we see at NSFAS. To incentivize the study of degrees in critical fields relevant to our economic needs as well as our technological advancement requirements, we will discount the load of students studying these courses. We will also combine this with Intensive review of degree programs, like Dr. Faleni mentioned, to ensure that they are teaching uh, that we teach relevant academic skills as well as, as practical knowledge at university to equip young people with the skills and knowledge needed to grow our economy and to be prosperous in the future. This intro policy will run for a period of five years to allow the economy to grow and our tax base to expand. After this five-year period, we will review the policy with the aim of working towards universal fee-free education. In conclusion, I want to reiterate that education is truly the golden key to unlock the doors of economic opportunity and prosperity for the future. We believe that through the Opportunity Fund, uh, alongside the reprioritization of wasteful government expenditure like VIP protection at the out of failed SOEs, we can achieve free education for all. This simply requires political will and a desire to take action to fix this problem. Because only action can fix South Africa. Thank you, Ruben. I see Isin Zulusami has competition. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Um, up next, we have a 4-1 Rhodes student and SRC president, Ms. Stefan Pashele.
have to what? Um, thank you very much, Madam Chairperson, and greetings to all, particularly young people of South Africa. Uh, mine is to deliver Action SA student accommodation policy offering. Um, access to quality education, I mean, affordable accommodation, pardon me, um, for students in South Africa remains a distant dream rather than a reality. Research has painted a stark picture that there is approximately 500,000 shortage of beds across all institutions of high Lily. Now what this means is that with enrollments increasing each and every year, the university fails to capacitate students with accommodation. So there is a shortage of demand and um, provision. So our students continue to face a lot of uh, difficulties in the accommodations which they manage to, to find. And most of these conditions are impacting their academic issues and also their overall well-being. Therefore, as the Commission for Accommodation, we saw that it was important to identify and also analyze the key issues which we find in accommodation and also come up with interventions and policy uh, stands that will effectively address these accommodation issues. Now, allow me to highlight the three critical areas of concern that we have identified and also outlined our policy offering thereof. The first one is the exorbitant cost of accommodation, which is a burden to students. Many find themselves paying large sums of money for a substandard living condition, and this is an injustice that we cannot overlook as Action SA. So, as Action SA, we will establish a public private partnership between government entities, tertiary institutions, and private developers to finance, construct, and also manage student accommodation projects. We will also identify and release abandoned and hijacked buildings near educational institutions to private sector for the development of affordable student housing. This is currently under implementation in the city of Tswani. Um, this was a motion that was passed by the Action SA caucus um, in council. So we will implement it throughout the country once the government. Another uh, policy offering that we will implement is that we will embrace a hybrid or distant learning for courses where feasible. This choice will be available for students who wish to explore it, um, this alternative, especially those who have access to necessary resources. I think this was elaborated by uh, our doctor here, and the main reason why we are exploring this option is because the COVID-19 has shown us what the future looks like. It has shown us what is possible, and therefore, as Action SA, we are going to embrace this option. And as the government, our aim is to introduce rent control measures to ensure the affordability of student accommodation. The second area that we have identified is the increase of substandard private off-campus accommodation that fails to provide student-friendly student environment, which poses a concern to us. Students are subjected to unhygienic, unsafe, and overcrowded living conditions, which ultimately affect their academic success and jeopardizes their safety. We have had many issues where students are raped in their residences, others have had their laptops stolen, so those are some of the issues that we are going to tackle as Action SA government. And how we are going to do that is that we will establish an independent accreditation committee which will be tasked to oversee off-campus student accommodation. This committee will be made up of different stakeholders, that will be your NSFAS or Opportunity Fund representative in our case as Action SA, your SRC, the Residence Director, Head of Security, your Health and Wellness representative, just to name a few stakeholders. And they will ensure that accommodation meets the standardized criteria, promoting the well-being and security of our students. Again, this independent accreditation committee will be rolled out in every institutions across the country. Thank you. 
Lastly, um, the issue that we identified was the limited access to on campus residences, which amplifies the housing crisis, particularly in the rural areas and the township. And additionally, these residences are mostly not user friendly, especially to students who are differently able. And this is an issue that has been overlooked most of the time um, under this government. So as HNSA, we are going to make sure that students who are differently abled are catered for in these residences. How we are going to do this is that we will ensure that we, we build additional campuses on, I mean, additional residences on campus, pardon me. Um, this will be done through the public-private partnership that we mentioned. These residences will cater for each and every student Okay. and especially those who are differently abled, as I've mentioned. We will allocate the resources for the establishment of new universities. As Dr. Zdoneni mentioned, uh, this will be your technical colleges, institutions focusing on teaching, your nursing, and as well as policing um, training. All of this will be achieved through the implementation of our Opportunity Fund. As Action SA, we are committed to championing policies that prioritize the well-being and academic success of our students. We will ensure that students have access to safe, affordable, and conducive living environments. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, well, I think you should take over the program since Chris is quiet. And the students have become a combination of the world. Very close to all the children. Uh, I'm standing in for the chairperson, so I'm not going to make another speech. Otherwise, the president would ask me to leave the auditorium, because <laughs> I'll be repeating the same speech. According to the program, we had one of our students leaders speaking on accommodation, and then the other one on tuition, the and, the expenses. and then the last speaker from the student side will be speaking on living expenses and then uh, she will then introduce herself over to you. Okay. Thank you Doc for the semi introduction. Greetings everyone, greetings fellow students and my fellow South Africans at home. Um, my name is Usa Sona Kayala. Um, I am the student forum chairperson for the Western Cape and also a former SRC member. So my duty today is to basically expand. My duty today is to basically expand on the living allowance, um, the living expenses allowance. So the living expenses allowance is for students Oh, sorry guys, can't see. But anyways, the living allowance for, wait, living allowances for students in institutions of higher education are indispensable in fostering their well-being and academic achievements. These financial provisions are designed to help students afford their various expenses associated with their studies. Sorry guys, I heard a noise at the back. Um, such as meal allowances, transportation, and academic materials. By dispersing living allowances, academic institutions, and governmental bodies can address the challenges that students face in balancing their academic responsibilities with their economic constraints. Um, by easing the financial anxieties, these allowances allow students to focus on their studies without worrying about how they are going to fund their how they're going to fund their basic needs. Action is a student policy with particular attention to the student allowance. Um, will focus on ensuring that eligible students receive financial support aimed at elevating the strain or basic living expenses. Let me leave this paper because it's confusing me. So these um, provisions that will be made will include meal support. So this will ensure that students get the support that they need or financial support to afford one campus, I mean, one meal at least on campus and then they will also get transport assistance. So it will be a sort of um, 
It will be an allowance, basically, which will assist students in commuting to and from campus. This speaks to students who, of course, are not staying on campus. It also speaks to data coverage. So data coverage, it'll um, disperse of data to students. For example, as students, we face issues such as load shedding. So um, the data coverage speaks to the university or the fund actually dispersing data to assist students to access online materials during studying. Also, it'll assist students with technical material. For example, every university student needs a laptop or, on, or a device to actually be in university. So this fund also, or the policy includes um, accommodating for students or providing students with laptops or devices which will help them essentially carry out their schoolwork. But with all being said on the factors or the parameters that this, uh, our policy will include and what it caters for, we have to pay attention to a very critical aspect of the delayment of disbursement when it comes to funding. Um, currently, universities face an issue where Fund, f funding is delayed and students don't get their, um, their allowances dispersed in time. So a common issue for students is the, the, a common issue for students is the disbursement. This can span up to a delayed payment can span up to a month or months or weeks. So to rectify this issue, action is a focuses on reforming of the administrative processes in dealing with the delays of disbursement when it, when it comes to students. Um, it is vital to address and correct these administrative inefficiencies to ensure that students receive the necessary support to promptly and consistently, thereby alleviating financial burdens and contributing to academic success. Actionist A advocates for the reform of administrative processes within the financial aid scheme to eliminate existing inefficiencies. Our proposition is to eliminate unnecessary intermediaries that cause delays and reduce accountability in the distribution of funds. By refining ad administrative procedures, our aim is to improve transparency in the allocation of the financial fund ensuring that resources are distributed efficiently and effectively to support the needs of students. This initiative emphasizes accountability, efficiency, transparency with the goal of enhancing accessibility and timelessness of financial aid for students who are entitled to these allowances. In conclusion, Action is A is committed to a student funding policy that not only recognizes the essential role of living allowances in higher education, but also actively works to enhance their delivery and impact. By addressing current administrative shortcomings and streamlining the distribution processes, we aim to establish a more efficient and transparent system. Action is A's dedication to this cause is unwavering and we will continue to advocate for the policies that support students' success and well-being. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sisona. Thank you very much, Sisona. Apologies for that. Um, guys, in Action SA, there's something we call ethical leadership. And with that, there is a lovely lady who is sitting right here who has found a phone that belongs to someone. And she, she gave it to me. If you have lost your phone, please come to me and confirm your password. No drama. <laughs> All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, fellow students, uh, up next we've got our national head of students, Yabutskali Thabo Malosi.
Manda Anda Trinam Fundi Krina Trinam Fundi Krina Down with bleed da Down with bleed da Thank you very much, uh, Director, our president, and all the students, including the media present here today. I want to thank the leader of XNC, the entire leadership, for allowing the young people of this country to see the and table and be able to pave their own future. It is very important that we, the young ones, are the ones at the center of deciding how do we want our future. So I want to appeal, more especially I see those who are in metric. I want to tell you something that is very important and very special about you. You are special because you are the first generation in history of our country since our democracy. You're gonna be the first metric class that is going to finish their metric outside the leadership of the A's. Therefore, it is now your responsibility. When we're outside, we engage some of you. I was a bit disappointed to find that some of you are not registered to vote. But I understand you, are young, you make those mistakes. <laughs> But for those who are not, and those who are registered, I want to appeal to all of you, not just you, go and speak to your parents, your grandparents, and your neighbors, to help you to remove the ANC, to help you so that we can have this offer action as have made here today. You must be proud, you must take not only those you are in class with, you must make aware all matriculants, those who are metric in the whole country, that you are this special generation, that you will be finishing your metric under a rat free government where the ANC government is no more in our country. So, all of you guys, it is now our responsibility. Everything that is, is being said here by the leadership of Action SA, from our president and to our student leadership that was speaking here, it's now in our hands. It's not just going to happen. We need to go back as student leaders, and nation. We need to take this to campus to campus, house to house, change to change, street to street, city to city, province to province, to remove ANC government. But equally, colleagues, man was just to come and give closing remarks. Those who are doing metric here, before you leave this session, I think we have heard that we have our student leaders here, we have SRC members here. Those of you who want to go to university next year in Tibet colleges, we also have our SRCs, presidents from Tibet colleges. Please go and speak to them, let them help you how to apply, because as we speak, university have opened already for next year. So after this session, please do reach out to us. We are here to help you and show you how you can apply for your qualification of your choice. Mr. President, we want to thank you for being a leader that you've been. And I want to tell you young people that what we're offering here, Action SA is not only focusing on those who are smart in terms of books and stuff. Even if those are not going to make it, this organization and the leadership of Action SA, we're still going to help you. We want to make sure that we are not just only academically smart, but also have skills that are necessarily to help you so that you can create your own jobs and create job opportunities in your communities. Education is something that nobody would ever change. And you are doing metric, I want to tell you, and you will and you understand, and I'll try to, to explain to you. There is no results that are ever important as metric results. That's why the country will only celebrate metric results. At the university, you only celebrate when you graduate, not your results annual. The matter your metric results, whether you're from a, a check, from any background, your metric results will bring everything outside South Africa, in America, wherever. If you're going to pass with distinctions, people will come looking for you. So now, go and focus to your studies. Mujolo yana how yemenyana, guys, there? 
you will see it when you get to university. So for now, focus to your studies, guys. The future of this country is in your hands. What actually they say to you just make foundation. But you are the real leaders who are going to make what the Chinese says offer it today to really work. And my Masha is not saying you name my for us, but you are the ones that will take this thing and move forward and make that read like any other country that is well in the world. We've been failed not because of South African aid. I can assure you, this country is being held by the people of this country. The government has failed us, but the people of this country have never failed us. So when I ask everyone, your parents, your teachers, to help you and help us to remove the government, to ask any new democracy, and the leadership of Emma Shabbat, that will be well for you and me, our children, and their children. Thank you very much.